long time ago, a very long time ago, this building was the ferry terminal over to the other side where you'd catch the ferry. But now, as most people in Los Angeles know, it is the Maritime Museum. Let's go inside and see what they've got. We're talking with Mary Frances Ravelli, the director of the LA Maritime Museum. And I believe this was actually originally the ferry terminal building. It was one of two municipal ferry terminals where the people of San Pedro would cross the channel to get over to Terminal Island. And this building was built in 1941, and there was actually a sister building across the channel that unfortunately is now demolished. But this building survived, and when the ferry service stopped in 1963, um, the building was renovated and then opened as the LA Maritime Museum in 1980. And tell us uh, some of the things that uh, people can see when they come here. Well, we're a museum all about the history of the harbor. So when you walk in, the first thing you see is our fishing exhibit, because fishing and canning made this area the number one fishing port in the country. We have sailor art, we have diving, we have hard hat diving, underwater construction, shows you all about how the foundations of our port were built underwater. You talk about fishing, and I suppose it's my British sense of humor, but I cannot but help notice behind us, there is a seafood dinner and breakfast logo. I mean, we don't serve breakfast here and dinner. What is that? Our local audience will remember that that is the sign from the old Canetti's restaurant in San Pedro, and that is where all the fishermen would have many of their meals. And so when Canetti's closed, the Canetti family donated the sign and table number one and some chairs to the museum, and we added those to our exhibit. So it really gives you the local flavor, no yeah. pun intended. Um, I see you have a lot of models, and I'm sure that when people come here, so they get a perspective of what it was like way back when, models play a very important part in that. Well, our model collection is very varied, and some of them were built by the shipbuilding companies uh, for business purposes to show their clients what a boat would look like when it was complete. Others were built by hobbyists who had some connection to the ship, and we even have a toy plastic model of a tugboat. A toy model? Mm -hmm. There was a television program in the 50s called Waterfront, and it took place here in the harbor. And one of the tugs was named Cheryl Ann, but in reality, it was a Wilmington Transportation Company tugboat named Milton Patrick. So the Cheryl Ann boat became a toy, and we have one of those plastic toys here on exhibit. And I guess kids in that era could go and buy one. Yes, they could. Uh, as viewers can see, I'm sitting on, the first word that comes to mind is a lifeboat, but I'm assuming this was not a lifeboat. No, this is actually a tender. It's a smaller boat, and this one is called the Gosling. We talk about the difference between ships and boats, and I'm going to let one of our tour guides um, give you some of that information, but there's a neat way to distinguish between a ship and a boat. Okay. And this is a small boat. Okay, so let's go explore the Maritime Museum and see some of the neat, nifty things they've got on display for you to see and enjoy. One of the most important aspects of the LA Maritime Museum are people called docents. And docents play a very important part here because they show kids, a lot of kids, around the museum. And we're talking right now with Dale, and we're standing by this boat. Um, I believe you have an interesting story about boat and ship. What is all that? Well, it's a lot of these people and kids of all ages come here they haven't even seen the ocean before some of them it's amazing and I talk about ships and boats and first thing I like to ask them is what's the difference between a ship and a boat and the, sometimes the little kids uh, think a little bit well a boat is small and a ship is big and I say that's exactly right so this is one of the pleasures I, I'm in forming some knowledge of the ocean and the sea to these kids. And this is what's so much fun about being a docent, too. I'm sure one of the great things about kids is their tremendous sense of curiosity. And that, as a, as a docent here and, and guiding them around the museum, you must get a lot of really interesting questions from them. Well, it depends on the age of the kids a lot and uh, what group they're with. And yes, I do. They ask a lot of questions that have nothing to do with this. And and th this is what's fun about being a docent. You never know what you're going to expect. And you get questions about diving and everything else. And so it's, it's fun to 
feel their questions and just see if, if sometimes they ask questions that I don't know the answer. So I've got to find out for them. Do you have any sort of nautical background or did you learn a lot of stuff when you came here? Uh, well, I started sailing when I was 15 at Sea Scouts. Wow. <laughs> and that's uh, quite a few years ago. Yes. And uh, I've been sailing and on the ocean. Uh, I love the ocean. And so when I retired from my regular work, I thought this is a real opportunity to continue my relationship with the ocean and also maybe draw a few more people in and onto the ocean. Yeah. And I'm sure from what uh, your thing says, Dale Volunteer, you like being a docent. Oh, I love it. It's wonderful. There's great people working with us. Every time I take a group out, I learn a little bit more. Terrific. Talking with another volunteer called Jack, and I understand you've been here 12 years. What in your 12 years have you found to be, in your own personal experience, the most interesting item here? The people. The people. The people and the children. Yeah. The children come with a lot of questions. And I say, it's like a museum. It's like your closet. What do you have in your closet that you'd like to show people? And that's memorabilia. Most fascinating is some of the models. Some of the I used to build models. I built a model of uh, a sailing ship, rigging a model, and watching our model makers, who are no longer here, but put things together. And children ask a lot of questions of those models. I think one of the most interesting things when you look at a model is, especially if you look at sailing ships or if you look at you know things like the USS Iowa, the intricacy and the, and the masts and the wires and all that, and that must be a very difficult thing to do as a model maker. We had a model maker who would go to England and pick up the original drawings of the model of the ships and rig it from that. Are all the models in the museum here, are most of them from a diagram or some sort of plan? They don't just come out of someone's, you know, brain and mind, do they, or do they? I'm not sure, but I have seen this particular person go back and pick up the original drawings. And others I have made are from kits and with, with a lot of instruction that you usually sit out there in the front and when I see you sitting there, um, I see right in front of you is something that goes back to my childhood and that is a diving suit. Tell us a little bit about the diving suit. Well, it looks very large. It is large. But I'm told by the fellow who brought, them up, brought it, uh, Terrence, said that uh, it really is bloused out and it's been hanging there for a long time and gets stretched, but it is filled with air when he wants to come up. And for people who don't know this, that used to be, back in the day, a long time ago, a man would get inside there and that's how they would go down to the bottom of wherever. Sure, and they still do. They oh, still yeah. do? Uh, yes, yes. As opposed to scuba diving, he can stay down longer. We're standing in a completely different area, and um, I want to say in a sense I'm surrounded by kids, so tell me, what is going on here? This is our very special children's area of the Maritime Museum, and we call it What's Going On in the Harbor Today? Because this area looks out onto the main channel, and there's always something going on, all kinds of ship traffic. And so this is a space for parents and kids to get together, learn more about the harbor, and have a good time. So kids can really identify, and there's sort of things here that are, I don't know, kid-friendly? It is all kid-friendly, and it is surprisingly low-tech and very popular. <laughs> lots of blocks, lots of hand-cranked cranes, lots of dress-up. and Lots of dress-up? Dress-up closet, um, different outfits you might see in the harbor, whether it be a port policeman, a fire chief, uh, anything like that. They can Dress-up is very popular with little kids. I see looking over to my left. Is that what you're talking about, all yeah. these uniforms? That's here? our closet, a Navy Coast Guard construction work. 
worker and those are some of the uniforms we do see every day in the harbor. So knowing the intense curiosity of kids, when they come here, do you have to tell them, you know, what are all these things and do you know no, that? We, we don't have to tell them anything. They, they basically know exactly what to do when they get here. We do have graphics on the walls that explain a little bit about what they're seeing out the window and ideally the parents read those to the children and we have little binoculars for the kids. Little binoculars? Yes, we do on the windowsill and they can get a front row view of ship traffic. Wow. We're in one of the really kid-friendly areas here and tell me, we've got two wonderful little kids here. What is your name? Kendall. Paige. And what are some of the things you like doing here? Um, we like um, playing um, with the cars. Which is your favorite thing? Um, the, the bridge. The yeah. bridge? Why is the bridge so exciting? Because you can take it apart and put it back together. And Paige, what do you like doing here? The cars. You can um, play with them. One of the nice things here, you can look out at the big ships out there. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I have a cute little boy called Francis sitting next to me. Francis, tell me how old you are. I'm seven years old. You're seven years old. And what is this intriguing thing you have here? Did you built that. What is it? An eagle ship. What is it that you like about Legos? Because I can create a lot of stuff. I'm sure that's one of the things that Legos like. Kids can create. And there's all kinds of stuff here for other kids besides Francis to come here and build wonderful things. So kids, come on down and build your own ship. One of the benefits for grandparents and parents mm -hmm. sitting here is... Well, they get a place to rest. They get a place to take a load off, check their phone, dare I say it, but <laughs> you can view the play space all at once from the sofa. So you can always keep an eye on your child, but you can also relax a little bit after going through the whole museum. I think then that's a really important point that older people, uh, senior citizens, can come here with your grandkids, with your children, and you can sit down and relax. So this sofa was really designed for adults in mind, although oh. children enjoy it. Also, we really thought of the parents and caregivers when we designed it. And whoever designed it really designed it very cleverly because although it's, you know, whatever, it looks like a ship. It does. It's supposed to look like an oil tanker, but of course it's a sofa. Okay, wonderful. So come on down and experience all this magic for yourself. You'll love it. So as we close out another edition of Armchair Traveler, this is John Clayton saying bring your grandkids, bring your kids down here, and just like little Francis here, dress your kids up and have a fun time at the Maritime Museum and the interactive things for kids. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.